some of us in the decolonizing design group have started to almost push away from the term because it's being um, being conflated with terms like anti-racism, um, social justice, racial justice, climate justice, so that all these frameworks become one rather than having this larger understanding of it. So it becomes a equality, diversity, and inclusion type of work, which which it's not. The past seven months have shown us how much you have progress and then very easily you kind of go back now very much feels like when I was 14, 15 years old during September 11, <laughs> you know, where things were just like, oh, okay, you are a terrorist. That's what you are. You know, that's kind of that representation. Even though there is more kind of representation now of different cultures, you still see these little elements, right? Because even then, if they're going to have an Arab character, that Arab character uh, has to be completely, um, what we would say, whitewashed for them to be relatable, whether they're Indian um, Chinese, uh, Arab, they have to be kind of white in a way to be uh, gauged by the audience watching something. The design world tends to cling on to particular type of designers who look a certain way, who speak a certain way, who design in a certain way that it is um, kind of digestible to the West because they, they understand it has an aesthetic they completely understand.